Welcome to this special edition of The Coaches Show. I'm Mike Bianca, coach of the New Orleans Hurricanes. With me is my co-host and good friend, Ryan Gray, coach of AC Diesel. Tonight, we will take the virtual field walk of the NXL MLPB Texas layout on Guns Up. Remember, you can share our live from Facebook and from the Major League Paintball YouTube channel for your teammates and staff, so don't forget to do that. Please press the like and subscribe buttons. Ryan and I could certainly use it. If you're watching on YouTube, and follow if you're on our Facebook page. And by the way, to answer Mr. Porter's first question in the live chat, I will be playing Snake One, Porter. Thank you. <laughs> this show is sponsored by Max Sports, where if you or and your team are looking for custom paintball gear, uh, get Max. His uh, website is scrolling across the bottom of the page. Also, if you are wanting to get into the Coaches Clinic for NXL Texas, uh, Wednesday morning, or sorry, Thursday morning at 10 a.m. on the NXL Pro Field, uh, as well as in the VIP. There are still some spots open. Just make sure you get registered and pay ESAP if you want to get in. Um, man, this layout. What are your What are your initial thoughts? Uh, as traditional as it gets. The only thing that would have made it that much more traditional is if you had a snake corner, and then. From there on, it's like, let's go, baby, right? This is this is what a lot of the, the professional teams, and I would imagine many of the divisional teams have been wanting for some time. And uh, I think this is going to show, this is going to show the old school, new school, and which school wins. Yeah, I'm kind of excited about, um, we talked a little bit about, before we jumped on, about some of those spaces, right? Some of the places where there's not any space. And I'm also happy that they didn't use all of the giant boxes. Um, you know, I think there's two of those that are not in use. Uh, Christian from In The Pits podcast sent me a message earlier and was like, oh my God, thank God they didn't use those. And um, so I'm, I'm happy Jason's not feeling like he has to use all the bunkers in the kit, right? Right. Because uh, it does look right. like there might be some interesting cross field things that can occur. And when you have a snake a ladder snake this long, um, it's going to get interesting, right? It's going to get interesting. Yeah, it's, it is going to be interesting. Uh, you know, one of the first things that, you know, people see that a snake that go that long and then you've got a completely linear Dorito side practically. Um, yeah, it's fixed bayonets time, right? Let's, this is gunfights. And I think, I think you're absolutely right. I think there are going to be opportunities for Crossfield. I think there's going to be a lot of opportunities to use the space and the pocket. Um, there's going to be a lot of things we can do here. Lots of options. Usually when you have a traditional field like this, you can get crafty. That center, initial thought on that center, it's going to be strong. I agree. And I'll tell you, just because of the way he played in, um, in, in XL Vegas, Kirill Peridney is is going to have a field day, I think. <laughs> I think he's going to love this. He so. really is. I think yeah, JTUG25 says, uh, do you think Jace, Do you think Trozen didn't want to kick the Hornets this twice? <laughs> uh, possibly. Possibly, right? I, I know uh, there were some complaints. Not just, to, uh, to be honest, the field was super fun to play in Vegas. It was just yeah. really hard on Maddie and, and uh, even us as we did some field breakdowns after. It was a little bit challenging to describe sort of what was going on to having to talk about top and bottom versus snake side Dorito side. So it's, yeah. it's quite possible. So, well, let's bring the layout up and kind of chit chat. I know you got a meeting after this and so do I, so uh, let's get into it. Okay. By the way, everyone, thank you so much for the comments. Uh, we you know, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to stay focused on the job at hand, but some of you guys are saying some such great stuff. I just wanted to say hey, thank you. Keep them posted. We'll we'll try and get back and respond to you when we can. So um, layouts up. Why do you say we just start with a really basic look from back center, like what we think the initial lanes are going to be? I think there's several <laughs> from each side 
of uh, of this bunker here at what we'll call the home bunker. Um, there it is, grabbing that thing. I do think. What's everyone's opinion? You think you're going to be able to kill this inside, like the inside, the uh, inside can and the inside Aztec? I'm talking the ones initially to the left and right of home. I th I think those shots might beat there. You're looking at what a 20 feet, 20 foot run. Could be. Those are the two shots I'm talking about that Ryan has up on the board. I think I think you it would be in your best interest uh, if your first shot's on. It'll be in your, your good interest to understand your percentages on this. You know, we might be surprised though. We might initial thought is you might have to be hip sliding into this, but then maybe not, right? There you go. One over that edge there, just inside that Aztec for that corner. Yeah, and I think if you shoot it low enough, you might be able to catch the snake guy in this gap here. I just don't know. You know, it'll depend on where this thing actually ends up getting in the way how low you can shoot on this edge here there might be an opportunity from there because just initial thoughts here we'll have to look at it but if you shoot on the outside of that nipple i don't know if you can do that around the aztec but if you can shoot on the outside top nipple of that w on the outside of the snake right in there the reason why i'm saying this is because that snake is so long that dive into it might take the player a little deep and you might be able to drop a ball it might actually be it's better like thought. from back here like from the box area right like being back off the box you know yeah might be better out there yeah just right there like that kind of shot mm -hmm. it might drop it's because i mean do you think that's going to be a sharp angle for the runner because he's so the he's, guy going up or the guy going out you. The guy going, if he's going to the snake, if we're talking about trying to shoot a snake runner, that snake runner, I genuinely okay. feel. Yeah, it's, so that's kind of what I was looking at earlier. It almost seems like it would be who of you to shoot right over the beam here. As he's going in, he might go deep, right? Because he's going to be running more laterally. Uh, and it's going to be hard to kind of stick to that beam. Right. That's That's my point. I think it's yeah. he's going to be angular or lateral, and we might we might get him in a, you know, might be able to get him yep. deep. Something to consider. Yeah, the other thing I think you're going to see, Mike, is guys going around the corner, right? Hundred percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, going around the corner, and if you're shooting this, you you might be able to catch that guy on his way up. Uh, it's going to be right. You tough. might see you that know, guy dive you... into that corner. He might dive into that yeah. corner and decide to crawl up. Now. He might get picked up if someone decides to use a center or a cross field shot, but uh, but yeah, they might slide in that corner and just crawl around or maybe dive around and try and keep going, and you'll catch him with that lane. Yeah, so possible, All right? Possible. What about but this? Yeah, I think I. Yeah, you know, now see, here's the interesting thing about this: if you come off the home, not just using that as a shot, like coming out and up and shot. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of this is I don't even have to come up to it to use the same shot. I can use, I can step off the home. I can use that space, the big brick at the center, along with this tower, and I can play space off in home here. Ah, and, sorry. And look at the sky and <laughs> it's all good. And if you need to, you hit Q. There you go. Beautiful. So I could literally step off on my way out here. I could stop right here on this line, shoot this. I could probably even step inside a little bit and, and put myself behind the tower, protect myself, shoot across, right? Which gives me a greater angle on that tower. Or I can shoot the straights here. I can be inside the can, outside the can, shooting for three to one. I can even be shooting up the gut. So lots of options. I can fight my way in here. I can read the paint before I, I decide to take the can or maybe even the Dorito one. But I think you're going to see a lot of this pocket type shots here where people are going to want to get guns up here. 100%. Yeah. Now, obviously, this also eludes, and I don't mean to get off topic, but you know, since we're doing a quick high-level walk here, 
if we're going to use that tower or this spot, if we use the tower, mm -hmm. the tower is basically going to be our, our, our stop off to shoot a particular gap. And then this would be a great location to feed the center from that tower. Yeah. Tower. It's what, yeah. Kind of a release point, right? Just use that as a launching point. What do you think about this little Mayan? What do you think about this guy? He's, he's going to be used because I have a feeling, uh, call it a feeling. <laughs> I don't know. Or maybe it's just me trying to concoct some crazy scheme. But I think you're going to see players trying to use that mini wall next to the snake. And the reason why is that's going to be a way to check off center as well as be a spider trap for the snake. So, conceptually. Sure. And I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm seeing this at the... This is interesting, and this is my first time on the Guns Up app today. So, but I, I think that Mini Aztec might be used as a checkoff, right, or another launching point. I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna be if you gun and not gun at it, but if I mean you just like run straight at it and dive early, you might you might be a little hard to shoot. Hmm. The, the question you have to ask yourselves, everyone, is why do I want to be there? What's my purpose, All right? Yeah, again, just to remind everyone, everything that we're talking about is all conceptual and we're just trying to create some hypothesis for you guys to use at practice, right? So these things, if you wanna make a list of these things that we're kind of talking about, these are the things you need to be testing at practice, right? And what I'm, what I'm trying to show here uh, just by kind of gliding around is the edge of the box, right? Where, where you see the edge of the start station as you scroll across the back line. Uh, and if you can see the back center, that's dangerous. Those are going to be areas that, uh, that are going to be dangerous. Right. Uh, and that's right. kind of the reason I was asking uh, coach about this Mayan here is you can see the edge of the start box on the other side, mm -hmm. and you can see the edge of the home. Right. So, this is going to be tough. You, it's it going to be tough. This might be more of a transitional space from back center. Once the game sort of develops 10 to 15 seconds in, now you're releasing maybe into that mine again as a launching point kind of into the middle of the field. Right. The tower if, uh, is going to be a little safer. The tower is going to be safer. There might be the possibility too of if you want to mix it up, you could L route up to it. He could shoot from home and release along the side of home and then L out to his his right into it, and he might not be seen if he's low enough. So if you see here, um, it, you can just see the edge of the box. This tower here being on the line, whereas this Mayan is outside the line, that half a line makes a huge difference. If this spot, if this thing is over uh, half a you know half that line and sitting on the edge. Now you're going to be a little more vulnerable to the back center. This this is going to be a much safer space to go through. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. I, I think anything past this can now. And and you know we we haven't shot the percentages. I haven't seen it live yet, but I think anything past this this can is going to be precarious. I mean that is a even with the is that a pin or is that another can? That's another can. Uh, mm -hmm. even with that can up there, that's a pretty comfortable lane I can get established before, you know, I can protect that outside pretty solidly, probably with, if I wanted to, <laughs> two, three guns. Yeah, this is the same space we were just looking at in opposite. So we're looking at the other tower uh, and kind of that dead zone that Mike was talking about where a guy can go deep up into the tower and his gun's already up shooting this way. It's going to get a little bit right. sketchy getting out on the Dorito side. It's going to get a little sketchy. That's right. Yeah. It'll still be good to see because he's going to have to kill you in this gap because he loses his shot there and he's not going to have it here. So he has to kill you based off this, what I'm seeing. He has to shoot you in that, what, six, seven foot gap past the can. Yep. And right there. He's got to he's got to get you in this gap because once once you're past that, you're out of his shot. So this is his kill zone. 
Now the question is, is there a, a gun that can make up for past this gap? And could it be the the can and not the mid midway can, but the Yeah, yeah. This can oh <laughs> Q. Hit Q. The I did. I thought there it is. I hit escape. Yeah. This can here, is, right? Yeah. That's the one you're talking about. Yeah. Yes, sir. You're, mm -hmm. you're saying on the inside. No, he doesn't have it on the inside. Just the outside. He doesn't, does he? No, he doesn't. Wow. Just the outside. That's interesting. Okay. Let's go take a look at the middle. Let's. I apologize if uh, my keyboard is uh, <laughs> bumping in your ear. Uh, I was supposed I to drive tonight, ladies and gentlemen. That's my fault. So uh, I have a big keyboard. Yeah, what do you think about the center? Hmm. I don't think. That's a pretty good gap right there. Um, if you know they haven't gone past a certain point, you can. Mm. Now that's mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, this is kind of what I was uh, was seeing earlier. If you're able to 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 keep the guy in that corner Dorito, you have the can in this other part of the the center fifty, kind of block you out. Um, Some pretty interesting stuff right here. That is. Mm -hmm. You can get crafty up there. Chances are you're going to have company. So the minute mm. you shoot, you're made. So unless you've got some form of overwatch. Which is going to be tough in here, right? It's going to be tough. Yep. It's going to be tough to keep Ooh. this guy from getting mugged. Absolutely. <laughs> back up to that. You see where that mini wall is? Can you go to its mirror? Like back up to it? Sure. Right there. Yeah, there it is. Look at that. Mm hmm And then snake way. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Okay. So what do you think? If I had based off the two dimensional view and I made a call, I was on a phone call earlier today. I I made a joke with Aaron Pate from the Hurricanes. I said, I bet you you can't, you're not going to have any good shots because basically snake one is your corner, right? <laughs> and I said, mm -hmm. uh, I bet you snake, I bet you you're not going to have any good shots till at least snake two. So. Yeah, I'm kind of seeing how far you can go in this highway thing. Yeah. I figured that's what you were doing. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think I'm getting I think I'm getting the idea, guys. Uh, Bear Ridge is in the uh, chat, so <laughs> yeah. at first I was like, "What? Are, what's with all the teddy bears?" And then I went, "Oh, so." <laughs> And Andy, that's kind of what we were looking at. It's something you should experiment with. Andy gets in the chat and he says, uh, highway that you were just doing, Ryan, over the beam into Snake 2 may be a safer run. It may. Depending yeah, on Andy, that's situation. kind of what I was looking at. Like if, you, right. <laughs> if, you're, if you double up the tower, like once we get to actually play on it a little bit, if you're doubling up that tower and your snake one guy is actually 
instead of launching out into space is going up toward the highway and then dives across in the snake two or three. Um, it's a, it's an option, you know, that you can test. Yeah. I think it's interesting. I do too. Okay. So now that we've done that, right. um, talk kind of looking at what we were looking at, you know, it's going to be some blinds right into that, um, the, the space we were talking about kind of here behind the tower, it looks like there maybe, um, yeah, right. It looks like maybe you can, this guy, oh, good Lord, <laughs> can put pain into that space, right? On his way out. Absolutely. Even. Oh, it, yeah, yeah. On his way out. Um, and then he can cut the top of the bunker off and get on the straight if necessary. Um, Mm -hmm. I mean, because once you're in that snake, un unless he's matched and contested, wow, right? Uh, right he now, has I to don't be. see anything. <laughs> he, yeah, he, he has right. to be. Yeah, yeah. So that's gonna be it's gonna be really important, people, to win the snake war here, and and winning the snake war. Can can be either a keeping them out of it and doing work elsewhere or b being in there and not letting them in or being in there and beating their other snake player um because then man it's off to the races i imagine you're gonna have a Let's lot of see. a lot of backs Let's see if this is helpful i don't know if it is or not God, Jason is so crafty. See where he put that yes. pin? <laughs> like, yeah. This tower just Sorry. can't. Sorry, Siri is trying to. No, talk I to saw me. that actually. Yeah, that pin, that pin yeah. placement was very intriguing. Uh, one of the first things yeah. I noticed as well, because like, oh, we could just let. No, we cannot. Right. So, yeah. You want to head into the snake, or let's get to the snake yeah. corner. Right, which technically in the snake corner, um, because it is inset, and I doubt you'll be able to control anything from there, but you can gunfight from here. These are great gunfighting bunkers, um, they allow you a lot of opportunity to get crafty with things. You can certainly live forever back here, yes. Yeah, this is what I was talking about with the around, with the around, right? So if you see where back center is, um, yep. you know, back center um, is here. And you can see the edge of it is covered up with the Mayan. I, I, you're going to, I mean, you just go right in. You just yep. go right around. Which is why that tower is going to be. So you've got a pretty large gap there on the Dorito way, but but that's what is that the gap between which one? Yeah, I think that's what we're looking at right now on Dorito side. Yeah, I think that's like the gap between uh, the baby Dorito and the third Dorito. I think. Yep, it is. Pretty big gap. Now here's my here's here's my thought process. I thought snake two would be the first one before you start seeing something that opens up a little bit. Look at that. You got a sh yeah. You got tower and can now. You got the baby on a blind. The baby Dorito. What's the baby? The blind. There you go. That baby Dorito. Got a wrap on it. Now this is this is nice. Mm -hmm. Bet you there's gonna be some bounces into here though. Uh, 
Yep, there will be. Yeah. The other yep. thing about these larger, these larger type snake bunkers is if you have the snake to your own, to yourself, you can, you don't have to hug the beam anymore. You can, you can place so much looser. Um, a lot of different ways to play here. You could probably create some shots that, and I do think you're going to see a lot of, uh, I think there's going to be some bounce shot opportunities as well. Uh, my Mr. Least Holiday, welcome to the chat. My least favorite part of the game. Yes, I agree. But, you know, it's something you have to consider. For sure. I hate that. So that baby Dorito technically is your corner if you want to contest the wire. This wrap and getting up might prove to be a little bit more difficult than most people think, which is why the route might be a quick inside jaunt and then crossover. I don't know yet, though. Yeah, this way, right? Yep. Like come yeah. this way and then over. Yep. Although you just showed an interesting route as well. I thought that's the one you saw too. Yeah, it was. But I was just noticing something as we continued right there. Uh, yeah. Very similar to Snake 2. You're starting to open up a little bit. And not as well as Snake 2. Big gap. Still yeah, you're going to see a lot of points won on this side of the field, I think. Like, that gets stolen. Yeah. Yep. Someone slept on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's going to need to, there's going to have to be an asset with, with eyes on certain gaps at all portions of the job responsibility mid game. <laughs> Yeah, man. Twos will win tournaments, right? I mean, we just saw it. Yeah, right now, right now, Snake is strong. Center, center can be crafty and tricky. Um, don't miss your shot, though. If you can get out to the Dorito side, it's a gunfight. Yeah, I think there's going to be a I think there's going to be, you're going to see two significant styles here. I think you're going to see a pocket and an aggression, delayed aggression and aggression. Stand standard traditional layout play. Yeah, so we were talking about space a little bit. Um, why don't you explain what we were talking about? Yeah, using space. Um, I don't necessarily have to be in a bunker. I don't have to be on a bunker. I don't have to be, I can play in space, right? Um, where I'm basically freewheeling it out there. Like a good marker would be, if you were to look at the home bunker and then look to the left of the home bunker, you'll see a can. In that area where the squares are meeting, so the cross, right, right there, like that zone right there in that triangle, I could play that space. I don't have to be in the tower. I don't have to be in the can. I don't have to be in the Aztec. I could play that space, get my gun up, get eyes on things, make a read, and then make a decision based off the data I have from my eyes, yep. from my ears, and from the paint coming. So, could go did up. that explain it? Is that what you is get that about. what you're looking for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and like things like this, right? You'll see this huge open area. And it's interesting too. Jason does this a lot when he realizes, like, okay, you've got this, you got the home, we've got the tower, but then I put this giant brick here, right? Right. This is just dead space because if he would have put, if he puts a bunker there, it becomes transitional anyway, right? So right, he just takes the bunker out completely, right? Same thing here. You got big open space, big open space, because all the bunkers are here and <laughs> here. Yes. 
They're all on the wires. They're all down the end. Right. Which is awesome. Right. That's what we wanted. Yeah. You know, I was making a joke before we got on here that uh, I, I don't know how to walk a traditional field anymore. So, you know, seeing one now, I'm kind of like, oh, wow, the possibilities. <laughs> it's just like, it's incredible. Yeah, Andy, you're 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 exactly right, man. Like the the corners, right, quote unquote, are really just there as transitional space, it looks like. Although again, late game, if you're down bodies, you're you might find that those corners are real helpful. So Right. Holiday, you're absolutely right as well. There's a lot of space, yep. but in these in these bunkers, a lot of space because of the giant bunkers in the middle of the field. Right. And I, and a matter of fact, that's exactly what you and I were just kind of talking about is there's going to be a lot. And he nailed it. Um, there's going to be lots of opportunities to play that, to play that space. So. Even, even mid game, I think. Lots and lots of spaces. So what do you think is going to be like I, anytime we see a layout on paper, right? Before we've done any research, before we've gone out and shot a paintball on it, we see a snake like this and we automatically go, okay, there's going to be three guys in that thing, right? They're just yeah. going to dump bodies <laughs> into it. But then, you know, Jason offers us up this middle. Mm -hmm. that also yeah. looks like it could do some things, right? Um right. This is going to be, it'll be interesting to see where people, where teams put their three. hundred percent. Yeah. 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 I, initial suggestion is that if, if you're in the home and you stopped, like stop somebody from getting outside that can or stop someone from getting outside that Aztec, you're going to want to improve position to keep that scenario. Cause I'm not going to want, I don't on a layout like this with a snake that long, a center like that and a Dorito like that. I don't want to get caught with my pants down in the back center. Um, yeah. Secondaries are going to be key here for the threes. Uh, the ones, the ones they're going to want, they're going to want those Doritos. They're going to want the snake. They're going to want the center. I think, I think you are going to see people, uh, you know, you're going to see a lot of two, one, two. You're going to see, I think you are going to see three, two. I think you are going to see three, one, one. I think you are going to see you know, two, one, one, something crazy. There's, there's a lot of possibilities here. He's in Dorito 17. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jay. Agreed. Yeah. If he's in Dorito 17 though, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. He's probably on your side yeah. at that time. So yeah, Mike, no, I totally it's, agree. It's, I think, I think you'll see three guys kind of stacked this way with maybe the threes being even up here, right? Here and here, uh, depending yeah. on obviously what the play call is and where you're trying to win the, win the point from. Um, right, where they I can wanna even see put threes that force multiplier. Totally, right? I could even see threes releasing up into here. If you get- And getting and crafty. Two. Yeah, getting up there and then, and then showing something and then crawling elsewhere and then, you know, like Kirill was doing at this when you give him yeah. beams like this in a center he's going to get crafty and start doing all sorts of crazy things so it's pretty interesting so yeah I'm, let's talk I'm about excited a, to shoot some paint on it yeah let's talk about a few things that the listeners like when when you're heading into whatever the first part of your prep is um give them kind of a little bit of the agenda like what are you looking at first right so we're probably walking it right so talk Talk to the viewers a little bit about when you're walking this thing out, what are you looking at? How do you and the hurricanes do that? Well, uh, I get to pull out my favorite acronym and that's SWAT. So that's quite literally what I'm doing. The first thing we're doing as a team is we're walking that baseline. We're trying to understand where our threats are going to be, right? Then we kind of, we kind of, you know, talk about hey what kind of percentage what kind of threat level do you think that is right and we talk about we understand that threat level and before we go much further and, and everyone knows this is no secret but i like to do what is called foundational training so i'm going to i'm going to start from the foundation the foundation is understanding 
what's going to be safe, what I think is going to be safe to make on the break, what's going to be a high probability bunker. So some of the first things I do is I want to understand my threats on the lanes, where those lanes, those high probability lanes are going to be. And then I want to understand, I want to start painting a picture of what I think are going to be the most played bunkers and why, why they're going to be the most played bunkers. And then I want to figure out how to kill them early on the break. So quite literally, everything revolves around the break and the stack. That's how I put my guys on the box and where I want them shooting. And who do I want doubling a lane? Who do I want putting a single lane here? Do I want a guy running and gunning? And again, just understanding what the probability and the safety factor is for them making these. What's the, what's the success rate, right? And then I'm going to go test those shots. And I'm, and I'm not just going to shoot it two or three times. I'm going to shoot it 10 times with a different shooter each time and a different runner each time. Runners diving, runners going in, runners shooting, running and gunning. And I'm going to get percentages and try and understand what the probability is of uh of making it yeah hope hopefully that answered somebody's question so. yeah, yeah and then you guys you go space to space right mm -hmm. so we'll just go to the tower here so you guys go to the tower you stand around it and what do you say first question that's when we mouth. go in all right, first question all right, what can we see yeah all right i mean we've already talked about our route to it, right? That's our first thing. Now, the second thing, okay, what can we see and what can we accomplish from here, right? That's what your SWOT mm. analysis is. Drew Bell's in the chat, SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So I want to understand what I can do from this bunker. What can I see from this bunker? What can I shoot from this bunker? What are my threats from this bunker? And what can I achieve? Like, why do I want to be here is ultimately what we want to ask ourselves. That's the word I was looking for. What's the one word question? Why? Why? Yeah. The most important question in paintball. So. Yep. Why? Okay. So we've walked the field now and we've shot our shots, right? You kind of talked about that. Uh, now what? Well, now what the hurricanes are going to do, first of all, we the hurricanes, and we'll be doing this later tonight, is actually we've already done it. We've established our codes, right? Everyone have your codes for your bunkers, all right? If you don't have a good code book, if you have codes that sound similar to each other, like Viper, Sniper, you know, Typer, or I don't know, something like that, then you probably want to shift some of those. We don't want bunker Nate codes that can be mistaken for something else, right? Because that can cause all Diaper, yes, Diaper. <laughs> Um, well played, Shady. Um, but long story short, uh, so get your codes established. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start developing our zone calls. We we have a very uh, distinct and uh, intricate zone call system that is proprietary. So I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> so proprietary. Uh, if you guys <laughs> proprietary, if you guys are not doing zones. You should be looking at zones. Now, a basic concept of what a zone would be, all right? Okay, the snake zone from that Aztec over, right? The snake Aztec over to the snake. That might be a zone. Uh, the, from the home up to the center, including that Aztec and that tower in the center there, all the way up to the center, mm -hmm. that might be the zone. Another zone might be the complete linear zones from the can and the Doritos all the way up. That's a zone. That's a very basic three concept zone right you need to think of names for those zones it can be you know i'm just throwing it out there uh you know snake zone center zone and dorito zone or left zone center zone right zone whatever you know get creative get creative with it make sure it's something that and it doesn't even you don't even have to use the word zone right so but like a lot of people have probably used the the code and I've heard this one used by a lot of teams, right? If the uh, Dorito side is, is clear, or if that zone is clear, then it's charger. That tells you that nobody's on the, in, in the Dorito zone or what have you. And that's as high level as I can put it. But if you know, you know, that's correct, Tanner. So long story short, uh, zones, very important. So we would develop zone calls. What would Diesel do at this point, Ryan? What would be your your process? 
That's a. I've, uh, I've we kind of already that. have zones established. Okay. Yeah. Right. We kind of do okay. that when the layout comes out. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, so after the field walk, it's same. My process is very similar to yours, as you know. We've done this a lot together, but that's that's right. Uh, um, yeah. So first thing I'm looking at is uh, as soon as we've done the off the break tests and kind of know how far we can go um, and who we can shoot off the break. The next part of the process for me is uh, trying to figure out where am I going to put my two man groups and who are they going to be. Right. I'm start, starting to try to put together who likes to play with who on the layout. Um, and I try to do that as early as I can. I don't want to be figuring those things out on Sunday. Right. So early Friday, I want to start right. asking guys like, hey, who, you know, during the drills, who are you most comfortable with next to you? Um, I would normally at this point try to break into some three on threes, uh, kind of do each side of the field a little bit um, just to test out a couple of small things. Like, again, we were looking at that. Uh, mini win on the inside of the snake. Like I'd want to put a guy in there without somebody alive on the Dorito side yet. Uh, just to see, is it impactful to the snake guy? Can he really do anything? If the guy goes, if he, if the guy stops at snake three, does that thing do anything? Is it even important to have him there? Right. Is it a wasted gun? Is it somebody putting somebody on a job that doesn't exist? Um, right. And then same thing on the Dorito side, right? But first, especially with a Dorito side like this, I think two man groups are going to be really important. If you can get a guy out there and he's able to make it down the wire, I think having a guy close to him is going to be a big deal. It's going to be important. Yeah, I agree. You know? I agree. Very similar to a lot of snake ladders, like ladder snakes, rather ladder snakes. You'll mm -hmm. usually see those two man groups where someone's controlling the wire. Someone's checking the inside. Same concept here. If I can get a body out there and he can make progress, well, he's the main problem now. So the second guy can get out there with him and get underneath the lane or what have you because the other guy's going to be taking the heat. Now they can start bullying. They can start doubling their gun on people, start bullying each other, start leapfrogging, doing whatever they need to do in order to progress and improve position and start applying pressure and pinching people out. Yeah, I was going to do this earlier when you were talking about the zones. Um... You know, it might look something oh, yes. like Give them this. a visual aid. Yeah, it might look something like that. So everything outside of this has some sort of zone name, everything outside of this. So they can be in the can, but nowhere outside of it, that is a zone. Uh, they can be in the right. tower, but nowhere outside of it, that is a zone. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, most teams have another one. If there's a guy back center, but nobody alive on either side, that is another zone all this space would be a zone. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, but then we're probably really complicated or really simple. Yeah. But then we're probably getting into some Island things, right. Where I'm going to put a guy probably in this can and then bring a couple of guys down this side, um, especially on a layout like this, where I think it might be a little tough uh, to get out, which of course, at this point, we're going to know if it's tough to get out. Right. Uh, if mm -hmm. it's not, uh, then maybe I'll put my, my one over here and then my other two guys uh, down this just so we can see how hairy it's going to be for that guy. Um, and we're going to talk a lot about these uh, tournament prep things in the coaches clinic we're going to do in Texas. So I don't want to dig too much into that, but um, really for those of you who, are, yeah, 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 we can. Uh, for those of you who are playing only going to play two days you have to, if you really need an itinerary, you need to have times on it and you need to try to hold yourself somewhat to those times, unless you just see like a glaring deficiency that you need to spend more time on. You need to remember that uh, your time is incredibly valuable. Grayson Bomber says, how much emphasis do you put on bounce shots? Um, we'll probably do bounce shots for like an hour, maybe 45 minutes, but definitely first spend some time. You do spend time on them. You want to identify them. You definitely want to be aware of them. The last thing you want to do, Grayson, is get to an event. You you get the guy getting the snake, and all of a sudden you're like, yeah, I've got three backs, and all of a sudden you eat one in the face because you weren't aware of a certain bounce. So you want to you want to be aware of the bounces, not just because of to try and get an elimination, but to an avoid an elimination. So that's uh, every bit is important. So and anytime way, you guys are at the oh, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, gonna I say have a, 
<laughs> Anytime you're at the event and a player walks off, if you're the coach and he says, I got shot and I didn't know that shot was there, that means that your preparation wasn't thorough. Anytime you get surprised, it means your your preparation wasn't thorough. Agreed. Agreed 100%. Um, all right. Nikki Cuba has joined the chat. Um, but yes, they are important. So I, I believe uh, you should definitely spend some time. Um, do, do I think that like you, you do more than... That's up to y'all. Honestly, I would probably spend an hour uh, on one day and then I might come back and revisit them. Uh, we grade them. So, you know, on, on whether or not they're a good bounce or not. So that kind of thing. And we do refresh each other's memories about them throughout the weekend so that they stay ingrained. Um, and again, it's every bit as important to understand them to avoid getting shot as much as it is to use them to get someone shot. So. Yeah, and also right. keep in mind, like if you're when you get to the event and you're shooting brittle paint, bounce shots change. They Something do. may be and there at practice with practice paint that's not there with tournament paint. So just be cautious. And remember, at the beginning of this walk, when you were talking about, hey, if this if this tower is shifted just a little bit over here on this line or shifted a little bit over here on this line, that's going to change a shot. And you need to make sure that. Yeah. When you get to the event, the first thing you do is you go find the field you are playing on and you walk it to make sure it looks the same. Or if it doesn't, make your adaptations right then. Adapt to what you now know, right? Because knowledge is power. Data is what we need. So, Zachary Rush, man, what's going on? The Paintball Lounge from Slidell, Louisiana. Welcome. Um, so Love yeah. it. Good stuff. Hey guys, if All you right. are if you are watching on YouTube, please go subscribe. If you are not to Major League Paintball, make sure you uh, press that like button. Uh, if you're watching on our Facebook channel, make sure you follow the page so you'll be notified when we go live. Uh, we appreciate doing this. Uh, we want to keep doing it, but if uh, you guys don't want us to do it, we'll stop. We'll quit it. We'll stop because Mike and I have families, and we could go hang out with them. That's right, and talk to them about the layout. <laughs> my nine-year-old loves my nine-year-old loves to do plays he's like dad this guy should be in the snake and he should shoot everybody yes he he should do that son <laughs> i love it all right well perfect this actually works out for me and perfect because i have a i have somewhere i have to be at 7 30 so this works out lies no no it's it's true <laughs> it's another one it's another one of these so all right, guys, make sure you tune in next Tuesday morning uh, for our NXL Texas pre-event show with Coach Shane Pastana and Kevin Breddauer. Uh We are doing our picks, talking a little bit about Vegas, talking a little bit about, uh, of course, NXL Texas. Uh, thank you for joining us on the special edition of the Coaches Show. Thank you to Guns Up for use of your software, Major League Paintball for all the support of the show, Jake Jones for the production work. Apologies. I, it's time for me to check into my flight in case you guys uh, needed to know that. Uh, Jake Jones for all the production work. Alex Sorensen, Kevin Fillers, and Tom Cole of Major League Paintball. Uh, this show has been brought to you by Max Sportswear. We need to get Max. And again, another reminder, if you are wanting to do the coaches clinic in Texas, you need to get registered and paid ASAP. Uh, I do have, I have made shirts for uh, many of you who have signed up. Uh, if you signed up after I sent out the email, then unfortunately you may not get one. Um, but I will get you will get a shirt. Also, those people who have already signed up and paid tomorrow morning, uh, I'm going to be emailing you all field layout trackers uh, that I use. Uh, I've also got some stuff uh, that I've stolen from Mike in the past that I'm going to send you as well for some of those off the break trackers we talked about. I'll send you those. Um, I'm also going to send you some team scouting sheets that you'll be able to use to the event uh, for the event and for the clinic. Um, so you're going to get some things along the way. Also, I won't just stop doing that uh, as soon as Texas is over. I will keep your emails and I'll send you you guys those assets moving forward. So there is some other benefits. It's not just the two hour clinic. You're going to get some help from us along the way. Uh, I'm Ryan Gray with Mike Bianca. As always, be responsible.